we're training the year Virgil Hunter and I really enjoyed listening to John Charles and Frank. Good afternoon, Real evening, fun. morning, wherever you are. Hi. Uh, we are back on the Ultimate Sports Network. We're talking real boxing, boxing talk, all that good fun stuff. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, hey. We're having a contest to see who can be the most gray. I'm going to win this one. <laughs> I don't right. know about that, yeah, Frank. I, I, it's, it's, it's creeping up. But, uh, I think I'm winning. <laughs> oh, you be quiet down there. All right. Mr. <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to say it. All right. So. Charles, the black, he's <laughs> Billy D. Williams down there. That's all I know. So. By <laughs> he's men. got his hair and. Yeah. Man, I know. If my toupee is hanging on, so let's... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have a memory. I can't even think of Brill Cream. That's sponsored by Brill Cream. Yes, right Brill Cream. That's um, right. Anyway, um, we had some interesting things happen last weekend. We don't have a lot coming up this weekend, so we'll kind of give a, 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 a put a little bit on our plate for what's happening in the next few weeks. But let's go back and look at a, a decent weekend of fights. Let's start with the one that. I think we knew, but we weren't sure about just because of all the intangibles and all the things that could have and couldn't have happened. But um, Devin Haney uh, took care of business. How did he take care of business so convincingly, John? Well, you remember, as we, we made our predictions, it was hard because you guys took Cambosis, and I totally got that. I, I He had everything in his corner, you thought. But what he didn't have is, is Haney was is a better fighter as we've been saying for months and he just he just outboxed him i mean it was beautiful it was a master class of how to box a guy how to frustrate a guy how to keep a jab in his face keep him off balance use angles and not get hit very often i mean right. it was it was beautiful to see people wouldn't have liked it because it's the classic sweet science but he just and he rose to the occasion you know we were having our doubts and then of course when we did the show we didn't know that his father was gonna gonna make right. it, and his dad did make it. He did right before the fight, and you know that was a huge emotional uh, lift for for Devin Haney. So he had his dad in his corner. He was calm. He jabbed, and they just his dad kept saying, "You're doing good. Just stick to the plan. Stick to the plan." So they had this plan, and he just he just kept him in the center of the ring. And whenever Cambosis would charge him, he'd stab him right in the eye with his left jab, and then follow with the right hand and. I mean, he easily won 10 rounds. He might have won all 12 rounds. Yeah. I mean, it, it's debatable. It was just, it was, it was great. And he didn't get the decision stolen. I mean, you're holding your breath. Like they couldn't. It was too obvious. The crowd was even quiet. They knew Cambosis was a good, solid sport about it. He applauded, said, I'm going to give it to him. I'm not taking it away from him. So good, to, good for him. He's not a bad guy. He's just trying to build it up, build up a little bit, a little bit. Well, he's a rat. But no, it was all Haney. Haney was, he performed, he rose to the occasion, boxed beautifully. Well, yeah, at the end, of, I'm like, I'm looking at Cambosis and I'm thinking, he's looking like, I know I lost. So if, if I, yes. it, it was like, if I get the decision, I'm giving it back. You know, there's just yeah. no way, you know. So, yeah. Charles, now, are, do we see the best of one and not the best of another? Or is it Haney was just that much better and he is that good? Uh, he was that much better. Uh, they had a game plan. Um, I think his dad being there, which is why I took Ken Bosons, because his dad being there, it, it just provided the energy. and The plan was right in place. And, you know, we can sit back and go, well, you know, he still would have done the same thing. I don't know about all that. Mm, yeah. Uh, the dad was there, and, and they were right on point. Dad arrived 15 hours before the fight. Yeah, they were on a mission, and they handled it well. Um, probably it might have been um, his best fight to date and particularly what was all on the line and whatnot. But um, he is that good. Uh, Cambosis is very good, too. But they came in with a plan. You could tell that. And, and I don't want to compare it, but, damn, I look, I said, man, he, I'm just in shades of Floyd, man. Just the way that he was able to move around and bounce and just stick to the plan. And the guy frustrated coming after him, and he still stayed. Bah, 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 bah. I mean, he was right on point. Yep. Uh, beautiful plan. And just walked, walked the, you know, he walked the aisle. He knew he had this guy. Guy's not a he's not a bum. I mean, he won right. he, he won the title. So you gotta give it to him. So um Haney is that good. And he did what he had to do. He di they dissected the opponent. They had a plan, they executed the plan, the plan worked. When we say is he that good, he's that good. But we're not gonna say, we're not gonna crown him as the greatest yet, because there's too many other people, which is no, I mean it's not. We're not talking about he's still an email champion. No, he went over to Australia. 
He earned the right. He got the straps. He came back. He deserves all the credit in the world. He is the champion. Yes, he is. But we like to, in this media thing, like to try to see who the greatest is and all that. Let him, let him have his moment. Let him enjoy it. Now we just want to see some other stuff. But right now, you can't say anything. He did what he's supposed to do. Uh, whatever was going on with Cambosis and I mean with Lopez, that was his problem. Cambosis handled handled him, and um, Haney did what he had to do. So right now, the man said he was going to go over and handle business. He did that. So um, yeah, I mean he's that damn good. And and it's not to say that Cambosis is not good, right? You know, get to the point where you right. go, Cambosis against some other people still could be a problem. Could be a major problem, but as we always say, styles make fights, and this definitely was a, a, a situation where that definitely came out to play. Well, I'm going to make a comparison. I don't really believe it. You're going to understand what I'm saying. When we talked about Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder still might be the best heavyweight in the world outside of Tyson Fury. Yeah. So not not saying that's Cambosis, but he still stands to be a player in this thing, except for he ain't beating that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. I mean, you're right. And, and again, the style makes fights. I mean, he could not catch him. He could not figure out anything about it. And the guy, you can say, was running. But, you know, it's like when you watched, uh, you know, when Charlo finally got in his groove, Jamel Charlo got in his groove, he's backing up, but he's still popping him. He's finding right. a way to, to lay in shots while he's moving. When a guy's doing that, you can say running or whatever, He's using what he has to do to win the fight and not only win it, but win it convincingly. He dominated this fight. And I think you may not like the way that he, the style that he fought, but he he was dominant. He clearly was dominant. The guy was frustrated, couldn't do anything about it. And he earned every right to be crowned champion and his opponent knew it. Okay, John, so he's got the belts now. Who's coming after him? Well, he did say he he mentioned uh, uh, Gervonta Davis. We would love to see that. That, that is cool. that is the fight. Then Ryan Garcia is talking about he wants to fight Gervonta Davis, but I I would like to see because Gervonta I think he, the guy is doesn't get the respect he deserves. And then I read a columnist who finally said something that we've been saying on this program about how good he is, how he can box. We've been saying that it. I, I don't understand why people don't want to get maybe because they think he was protected by Floyd Mayweather, maybe, whatever. The guy is damn good. He's good. Haney and him or Haney said something about moving up. Haney and Tiafimo Lopez would be uh, uh, an interesting fight. And I read, and this is why I wrote an article about it. This guy is, oh, Tiafimo Lopez would knock him out. It's like, oh, really? He would, huh? Mm. Okay. Team Fimo was good and everything, and, and he lost to Cambosis, and whatever, for whatever reason, he lost to him. But and he beat the man, so he, he gets he gets all the credit. But uh, 135 to 140 is just loaded with talent, and it just makes it fascinating to watch. And they're young, yeah, they're not yeah. old guys, you know. <laughs> like, so uh, well, and, he, and like I said, there are so many of them, yeah, that that we should be able to get good fights out of this for the next few months, anyway, well, next year or so. Because yeah, someone's got to fight somebody. Well, I remember, too, that, that Cambosis has a rematch clause. Right. And, and right. he said after the fight that he, he was going to flip the switch on that. And now I haven't heard anything. Yeah. So I, I, I can't see how it would be any different a second time around. He might try to be more aggressive. And he was pretty aggressive. And he, he, and he said, I hit him. I thought the fight was close. He said that. And I, well, fighters always think the fights are close. Even though they lose every round, they, they, they rarely want to say they were beaten. Because he never got knocked down, his face was right. swollen up, but he just got out boxed convincingly. So if he exercises the right for a rematch, he'll be right back there in Australia soon. So, I mean, that's in the contract. Haney's like, okay, if, if he does it, I'll come back. So that might happen before anything else that we want to happen. And 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 Cambos is like Charles said, Cambos is a good fighter. He 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 tried his hardest. He. He did everything in his power, but, you know, he didn't really have a plan. I, I, I don't know what he was thinking. He think he was going to hit Haney once and Haney was going to go down because he got, Ooh. yeah, because he got stunned in his last couple of fights. So that meant he doesn't have a very good shin. Not true. He clipped Haney a few times with right hands. He only got 10 knockouts. It's not like Cambosis is a big puncher. Now he right. hits, he's, he's, he's a sharp puncher, asked Tiafimo Lopez. 
but uh, he, he, he's not a knockout guy. He's not like Javante. One punch knockout guy. That's Javante. So, you know, the rematch might happen. I don't know. I'm sure Cambosis is thinking about it. And but uh, so Haney really can't do anything until Camposis makes a decision on uh, what they want to do. But Garcia's fighting soon, and then he said he wants Gervonta after that. Gervonta will be a free agent. Him and uh, Ryan Garcia and him have been jawing at each other for a while. So hey, even if that happens, and then the winner fights Haney, it's all good as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Now, and I don't think we didn't talk about this previously, and I don't think we've talked about it after that as well. And I don't, if, if you didn't see it, that's fine, because I don't know if we, anyone saw it. But we went going back to the beginning of the pandemic and in, in the bubble and all that. We were watching the Maloney's. And were they both on the undercard or just one of them? I can't remember which one. Both. Both, okay. So any anything further from them? Because now they went from fighting title fights to 10-rounders. A, eight rounder for one of them. Eight, for, eight rounders, right? So yeah, for one, yeah. What's 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 going on there? Any any idea? Uh, uh, John, you can start with that, and then Charles, you can chime uh, in. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, I think was I, I can get them confused sometimes. But the, the bigger brother, the one who fought uh, the monster, got knocked out. He he won. He looked real good. He won by knockout, and Aram said he's going to get him another title shot. So, uh, uh, and then the other one who lost, see, here, this is when you're getting old, can't remember, that lost the rematch, uh, was winning the rematch, and then it got the, the you know, the phantom the, headbutt, third fight he Frank, got beat. Was it his, Franco? Franco, right. That's yeah. that fight. He won also. Uh, not, nothing really said about what his future is, but uh, the bigger brother is, is because he came running out of the ring and he gave Bob Arum a big hug and everything. So Bob Arum said, I'm going to get him another title shot. I don't know who against who. You know, he got his shot at the monster and, and uh, ended up at his head and up in his back. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the thinking is, but Bob Arum's a shrewd old guy, as we know. So he, he's got something up, up his sleeve. But the other brother, I don't know. I don't know. I, and Franco was going to fight again, too. And, and that fight, I think, fell through or whatever. But uh, he's not talking about Franco anymore. So yeah, it's just moving on, you know, move forward. Well, Charles, the reason I asked that is because we get these things in our head and our, our, in our eyes, what we see and what we think, and then they just kind of flit away, but they're still there. And when we're talking fights in Australia, I thought those two would get a little bit more publicity as well as what's going on with Cambosis, but I really didn't hear much about that going into the fight. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, though, when you think about Cambosis and the number of belts he has, he, has to be the, he had to be the A-side. He really did sure. have to be. I mean, coming in and you have a guy like Devin Haney coming over, overseas so the Maloney's are a nice little caveat to add to it you know to to that point but he had to do that because that fight as much as they love the Maloney's I mean unless they really had a major uh, bout with somebody I don't see them stacking that stadium like that I mean they knew what was going on they knew Cambosis was their guy he went over there earned the belts brought them back so it was was his show Um, can they come back probably so uh, Bob Rim, you know, he loves those guys. He's taking them under his wing and done everything he could to put them in good position. Uh, we'll see how it plays out with them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I you got to – in this game of boxing, it's, it's really funky. You got to win, man. You have to win. Or if you don't win, you got to keep battling and going against other people, defeating people that they think are worthwhile uh, to to keep your name up in the in the lights. So the Maloney's uh, – I mean, they're, they're, they're a nice fighting family. But, uh, yeah. but you know, when you when you got no opportunities and you drop down, you're gonna take a little L. So you might have been the B side, B minus, or something like that. But it clearly was Cambosis' night, and there's nothing wrong with that because you know you gotta when you fall down, you gotta work your back back up. And I think that's what the Maloney's are doing at this point. Well, and that leads us to the Fulton Roman fight. That you know Roman, you know we we've seen what he's done before, and you know we know that he's been in the mix. But Charles, what what was it about this fight? These went. What, what, why did we make this fight? Well, I mean, is it the point? Fulton was ready. Fulton was ready. I think Roman is a little older. Uh, Fulton came in. He knew what he had to do. He was he he's he's in his, he's at that prime. Where he's at that point in his life where he's ready to go. I mean, he's undefeated. He does not have a lot of knockouts, but he what he does, he does well. And when he came in there, it was another fight that clearly was he dominated. I mean, Roman, you know, oh, what are you talking about? Well, maybe 
he has a puncher's chance or he can get in there and do something. Somebody said but it, something. I don't know. But, but, but it was, <laughs> Who was that? Yeah, that? but it was clear that, that Fulton was about the business and he handled it. It was easy to that point for him. And so, you know, that this is another time where we talked about we're looking for fighters that are clearly continuing to show their dominance so we can keep moving them up the ladder and really get those shots. So, um, yeah, and that's what Fulton did. So, Roman came in with that great attitude when they had a great plan, but Fulton, it was all about Fulton in that particular fight. And, John, this is one of those guys that we haven't given a lot of respect to collectively because it's just, I mean, again, he fought here in Las Vegas uh, and no one even knew what was happening, like, you know, against Figueroa. Yeah, it's like, Figueroa, well, what, yeah. What, when was that? You know, oh, that yeah. was yesterday. Really? So, this is yeah. another one that kind of flew under the radar as well. Yeah. Is this, yeah. is this is Stephen Fulton a guy that we should start saying, you know, he belongs up there. I'm not going to worry about the pound for pound list, but he belongs up there as one of those guys in his division that we, we should be saying, this is somebody we really need to check out. Oh, yeah. And and he looked better this time. He, fighters, it, it's not a myth. A lot of times they win titles or have titles and they immediately improve because it's a mindset. I'm a champion. Mm-hmm. And 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 he looked better. I've obviously, he was fighting a, an older fighter in Roman than Figueroa, who really went after him relentlessly. And he got in ditches with Figueroa, as I said last week. He likes that. He's, he can beat Riddy. But you give him room to box like that, it's like Haney. He's like Haney. He's going to box your ears off, and and you better hit him and hurt him. And and I, I don't even know if he's been down. I don't think he's been down on this whole career. He, he, he rarely gets hit. I thought that uh, it's not wasn't just you, Frank. I, we both, both Charles and I were all, like, you know, totally in Fulton's corner. But I thought Roman would try to come on hard, and he did, but it didn't make any difference. Right. Fulton just just stuck to his plan, and, and this time he he didn't rumble. He just boxed them and boxed them and boxed them and boxed them, and then would occasionally rumble with them, but not didn't give him a chance. And it was again, it was a a thing of beauty to to watch him. And yeah, he's that good. I, I, he's not a knockout puncher. Again, like Haney, Haney's that's one of what the detractors say. He can't punch. Fulton's got like eight knockouts in all his wins, but Hey, isn't it all about, isn't it, aren't you supposed to win? Isn't that the bottom line? Like Charles said, you got to win, right? But well, it is the entertainment business, but you got to do what you got to be you, you know, if you can't knock guys out, you got to find a way for you to win. And and that's what they're doing. Well, and we mentioned this with, you know, again, we, we use the reference of Pauli Malinagi, but a lot of people, it's like, if you don't have the, umph in the in the trunk you still got to go out there and fight and it takes a, as we said it takes a lot of guts to get out there yes. knowing you can't knock anybody out knowing you're not going to hurt them with one punch or six punches but you still go out there and say i know i can win the decision and i can win it handily so i think that's what we saw with fulton's like i'm gonna like charles said i'm, I'm gonna go about my business i got a plan let's go through it let's see if you can deviate from my plan because you're not going to make me i know what i want to do let's do it and and, I, and we're going to make a quick segue from that to someone who's playing. I don't know what it was. And we, we, you know, we, we were talking that maybe they shouldn't have had a plan, but Donaire and, and the monster. I mean, okay. So the monster in a way is moving up in the pound, pound ranks. Again, we don't know a whole lot of credit to that, but John, is he that good or is it just, we aren't throwing anybody good at him. I think he's. I think he's that good. I do. I'm gonna say he's great, but he's that good. He had, Donier has really been the only fighter in the first fight to really challenge him, and last, like we were saying off air, that he 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 took some of those hard shots and he didn't wilt. Uh, he broke his orbital bone. So uh, I think I think in, in a way proved more in that fight than he has proved in a lot of fights against some of these guys we haven't heard of because. He had to dig down deep against, obviously, an older Denier, not as old as the one a few days ago, but a 36-year-old Denier who came back after that loss to win another world title. So that tells you how good Denier is still. And this monster was the the, the monster. And and uh, he said that when he got hit, he got hit with the left, that left hook, that infamous or famous left hook in the second round. And he said afterwards, that woke me up. Even though he had done well in the first round, he still said that woke me up and I thought, man, I got to get this guy because Donier is always going to be dangerous no matter. And then he just was destructive about it. Yes, he's that good. Uh, he's going to fight Paul Butler next, I guess, in, the, in a unifying fight. He's going to win that easily, obviously. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get somebody. Maybe he'll fight Fulton. 
they're not that far off in poundage. Let mm -hmm. him chase after Fulton and see if he can catch him. You know, we that's what we want to see. You always want to see the best of the best in boxing. I want that guy. I want that yeah. guy. Yeah. Right. Well, it doesn't happen very often anymore. So that's why I hesitate to say it about uh, the anyway. I thought he looked great. He was sharp. As I told you guys, we were talking, he was walking up the aisle. Uh-oh. There was something going on there. And, and Charles made a good point. He said, yeah, he was on adrenaline. But, you know, you got to survive that adrenaline. And I, I think in a way smart enough that if, if he could see that Donaire was taking his punches earlier, he would have backed off a little bit because he can be very patient. So I don't think he would have burned himself out. I think he would have just been more systematic about it. But yeah, he he's he's that good, and oh, I know pound for pound and all that stuff. But I'll just say he's very good, and his nickname fits. Well, Charles, when we look at and I, I seriously, I I don't remember who called what round. I know I called the earliest, but I don't remember what round it was. But did I say four? Was that right? Something like that. We were like five and yeah. six. Yeah, something like that. So I said four or two, and it went two. Anyway, it went two. <laughs> but when 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 you watch this fight. And we mentioned the adrenaline and all that. How dominant was he in the first round, in your opinion? Because I, my opinion is going to, I think, differ a little bit. Other, well, just go ahead and tell me what you thought of the first round, getting him into the fight, getting them both into the fight. Well, I mean, he was looking to be cautious because he had to be aware. He had to find out who he was fighting, right? I mean, was he fighting a guy that still had some pop? Was he fighting a guy that, or a guy that could possibly break his overable bone, orderable bone again? Or, or is he fighting a guy that's kind of on the decline? And I think that early on, it was like, well, you know, I'm seeing this, seeing what's going on. And then at the end of the round, it was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I can get him. I can get him now. It's not the same dude. I, I really yeah. believe he saw that. It's like, I, it's not the same dude. Not saying that Donair, I mean, it's not to take away from his greatness. But we always say, when you're an older fighter, you know, we said this about Pacquiao, you had those, those special moments. But the point is, when you press on the accelerator, are you going to get gas, get enough gas to make the car, you know, take off? Right. And I think that this was a time, unfortunately, just because of the age and, and, and who you're fighting. I mean, Donaire, the monster, is a monster. And when he saw the weakness, when he's able to kind of catch him in the first round, at the end, it was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to press it. I'm going to press down on the gas a little bit more. And I think that's what it was. But he had to see first. So he was fighting. He was just a little cautious. He was going for it to a point. But once he saw the damage, he saw the damage. It's like, you know what? Yeah, this is not going to be like the first one. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to have to wait as long. We're going to go ahead and press the, press the issue and see what happens. And if it is, I'll deal with it. But I think that's how it came out. And once he saw at the very end of that first round, when he got the knockdown, it's like, yeah, we uh, yeah, we we can go ahead and take care of this. Well, it almost seemed to me as if it was like, okay, I, we're just gonna figure out what we have to figure out. And I think they were both doing that. You know, neither one were really and John Craig McRone, neither one were really going after each other in the first round. And then like thirty seconds late in the in the first round, I think what Charles said is like, you know, I said, wait a second, I know what's going on now, I got it. And it wasn't like there was a sudden change or anything. It was just like. I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw that, I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw that, and boom, he nailed it. Yeah, and I, I think uh, uh, the first round was all about, the first two minutes and whatever was all about respect. I mean, nobody had forgotten what happened in the first fight. They, right. like, like uh, in a way, said, look, I don't want to get my, I, I, that really hurt, you know, to get my, that horrible, well, I don't want to go there again. I don't want that to happen again. So, hey, he was being smart about it. I See, I think what happened, too, was that, uh, Donaire might have been the same guy at 39, but it, in a, this, in a way, was a different guy. This guy was different than the guy that fought Donaire three years ago. This guy was really motivated. He said he was going to stop Donaire, and this is a guy that never makes predictions. Right. He said, I'm going to stop him. I want to knock him out. It's not going to be like the first fight. He was absolutely right. So what Charles said is right on. When he 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 was he looked super sharp, and so did Denier. Denier was right there. He was hanging with him. I so, yeah. He, he wasn't getting wiped out. But that counter right hand that hit Denier on the temple. Denier said, I, "I didn't see it. I didn't even know what happened. I'm on the I'm on the canvas. I'm like, what? What am I doing on the on the canvas? Yeah. How did that happen? And, right. Yeah, how did it happen? And that tells you that was a fast counter right hand, and he recovered from it, but." I think that was when Dunier said, okay, 
yeah, he's he he's he is who he is, but I'm better this time. I got him. I got him figured. I'm gonna go for it right now and we'll see what happens. And he did it. And then he wobbled him again, remember later, and then he flattened him pretty much, mm-hmm. even though he got up and there to his credit. He got knocked on his back, but he got up. It was just, yeah. Again, I, I made that a comparison earlier to Schmeling and Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis was a different guy the second time they fought. Right. He was still Joe Lewis. But this was a prime Joe Lewis, and that's what I thought when I was watching. In a way, this was a guy that was like, "Nope, this is not going to yeah. happen again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this guy. I am so ready." And that's what happened. Now, this is one of those fights where we look at it and you go, "All right, th- again, we're we're setting things up for the future." But Charles, is there a future outside of this weight class for In a way? Uh, I think so. If he wants to go there, I mean, he's probably going to be more comfortable at 122. I think he said that. I mean, he, well, I think he wants to stay at 118. Yeah, that's very comfortable for him. But if it's not what – after he cleans up 118, uh, which would uh, maybe becomes undisputed, then maybe he could look at 122 because he might get a little extra money if Fulton's still available and still Fulton is still undefeated. It might bring a little bit more exposure. So, yeah, he could probably do that. But uh, – after that, you're not far he wants to go. I love to see him at 126. I think that's asking a lot. I've been saying that before, but he's not gonna he's not gonna make 126 you know, until he gets like older, older. I mean, he's older now, but you know what I mean. To the yeah. point where he's going out of the going uh, ready to retire. But uh, yeah, 122. I mean, you, you you just can't make everybody as much fantasy as I want to have these fantasy bouts. <laughs> Some people are just not gonna be able to jump the weight classes like that. So. Respectfully, I'll say 118 is cool. I would like to see him at 122 if Fulton is available just because of the two fighters. I mean, two different styles. And right. Monster still might do what he did to others, especially when you only got eight knockouts from, uh, you know, from from uh, from that from that Fulton, from Fulton. But, you know, it could be that kind of way, but just to see it, because that means you bring two great champions together and uh, let's see what happens. Well, the thing that I find interesting is that we have, Again, we've, I've talked about this before, that, you know, weight class is four pounds away. You know, so in my mind, that's lunch. You know, you can make up four pounds. That's not a big deal. But in their mind, it's like going from 118 to 126. That's a huge leap. It doesn't seem like it to somebody who hasn't seen 118 in a long time. But you're thinking, that shouldn't be all that hard. Yeah, it is. Now, that brings a question up, though. And I, because we have some other things that we want to discuss about the future, but Let's look at some of these weight classes and how people are looking at jumping around or maybe jumping around. Just off the top of your head, John, what would be who looks like they're primed to go someplace else and chase somebody down or to receive somebody, maybe go back or go up or whatever? Who looks like they're ready to go to another weight class and do some damage? It doesn't matter which weight class, just off the top of your head. Shakur Stevenson. Okay. Yeah, he can go up to 135 right now and, and do damage. Him and Haney would be a chess match, but I'd love to see it just because they're superior athletes. Him and Javante Davis would be incredible. <laughs> he can go up to 140 if he wants, anytime okay. he wants. Fight Tiafimo. I mean, he's, he's, I think he's growing. You know, he's, and then back to Anaway for a second. Anaway is a small guy. You know, even up to right. go to 122 is going to be a, a challenge for him. 126 might maybe when he's old. He's 29 now. So I don't know how much he said he's only going to fight for two or three more years. So 122 is probably realistic. But yeah, uh Shakur, uh even Davis, you know, he went up to 140. He's a small guy too. He's only five five or so. But he maybe he'll he's like a Henry Armstrong. He might end up as a welterweight one day. But right now I'm thinking young. I'm thinking uh, prime, I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm thinking even boots. Even boots, if he wanted to go up to 154, he could anytime he wants. But it, it's all to me. It's Shakur because he's got what he wants, uh, and and then uh, Ryan Garcia is another one that he's pretty tall, you know, five ten. So he can get to 140 or 147. He's probably going to be because he's emulating his his mentor Oscar. Uh, so these guys have got a lot of, of weight jumping into different weights if if they want to it just depends on when Shakur though he can do I he could do it easily as far as I can it wouldn't be a stretch for him okay Charles I'm going to ask you the same question but John brought up something that I think is important if you are just the casual boxing fan 
and you're listening to this and blah, 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 blah. How sold are you on boot tennis? Uh, I think you sold on him. I mean, I think you're, you're sold on him, but, but we want to see that match. You know, we always talk about that. We want to see that match. We saw the match with Devin Haney, right? A lot of people had their, their misgivings about Devin Haney and calling him all kind of email champion and everything. So right. he handled that. So no longer can you really throw that at him. So uh, I think uh, Ennis needs to have a fight. I don't know if that's Keith Thurman. Whoever it is may be, he needs to fight somebody. I mean, Ortiz Jr. as well. I don't think they're gonna have that because they don't want to take that risk because they're both young and, and they want they want to go for it. They're gonna take a L, they want to go for the money grab. And uh him looking at uh, either Crawford or or Spence is I think it's a pipe dream for him because it's like why why would they want to fight him? You know, even though he might be right. the, he might be talented enough to face both of them and maybe, you know, who knows. But they're like, you, you ain't done enough work. I mean, you know, you what? What have you done? You have not proven to us that you've done enough work. It's just not your time. Uh, so with that being said, but in regards to the other part you mentioned about who could move up or who's ready to move up, uh, I think Earl Spence Jr. is ready to go, man. I do. I mean, 147, done everything he can do. Uh, he wants to fight Crawford, which he's going to do appears to going to fight Crawford. After that, you just kind of bide in time. And it's like, well, I'm going to keep going. He can naturally be comfortable at 154. I mean, of course, you get into the the realm of uh, messing with your banging with your uh, your your you know your teammate you know in the gym, but they can work that out. I'm sure they somebody will like you know you stay over here, I stay over there, but they'll work it out. I'm not, I don't think that's that big a deal really. Uh, but I think Earl Spence Jr. The other one John mentioned too. I think Javante Davis, and I think Javante Davis is on a mission to show people. Y'all thought I'm just some crazy thug. Uh, they don't have no right. cool clothes going on. And I'm just trying to knock people out. But lately, you know, talking about being a free agent after Mayweather, which I still think technically he'll still be with Mayweather. He'll just have a lot more freedom than he will. And instead of them trying to guide everything, it's like I kind of have y'all working for me, kind of like what Floyd did when he had Golden Boy doing all his promotions, right? You know, you know, nobody really talked about that. They talk about how Oscar De La Hoya really didn't like Floyd, but he didn't mind his money. So he, he, he didn't mind his money because they were great at what they did. I mean, going out there watching it, Golden Boy put out some of the greatest fights as far as management and promotion ever. They they know how to oh, they, yeah. oh, they yeah. had that down to a science. So, and I think that's what you might see from uh, with Floyd uh, and, and Javante Davis. But yeah, I think Javante Davis wants to prove to the world that one, he's already proven it to a point because his his popularity and people say, oh, what are you talking about? But you might think it's an old hat, but when he had Madonna there, and I know yeah. she's not as popular as she was or whatever, but the fact that she came out and watched this young man and, you know, he's selling out arenas all over the place. Plus, right. too, I think he wants to show that I'm versatile enough to go where I want to go. And if you run your mouth long enough, I might come for you. So you right. could see him to the point, and it might be a stretch, but I think if he really wanted to, he could drop to 130. He really could. I believe that he could drop to 130 if he wanted to. If there's something down there, he go some incentive, right? Yeah, he's like I'll go to 130, 135 easily, you know, maybe 140. But I think he's just kind of buying his time and he's waiting to see who's running their mouth. Of course, um uh Garcia wants it, you know, as far as that, you know, he, he wants that, but it's like, what have you done, Ryan? Really, really, we've still waiting on you. The last fight, we were a little skeptical. I mean, people want to see it, but you know, you got Oscar throwing all this money around and Sandy wants to throw the money around. But Tank Davis like, you know what I do. I come in, I bang, I make it happen. Right. Now I'm showing you some other stuff, whatever. But the other thing, too, that I think he really would love to do, and he that's why he made the call out. But I think this, this other party wants to – they better back up. I think they backing up a little bit. They came out really, oh, I got a rematch and stuff. Devin Haney, you might want to be careful. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I like, I like, I hate you. You won all the titles, but you start talking. And the one thing Tank Davis thrives on is, uh, yeah, you running your mouth. Let's let's get in the ring. And and he's an angry young man. And Haney might have the he would have to fight almost a perfect boxing masterpiece, I think, because you know you uh, move around a little bit, and if you drop your hands and you get you get boom, boom right. Yeah, you, you get a little soft or you or you you go to sleep for a minute, he can get you. 
And I, I just think about the Leo Santa Cruz fight. Leo Santa Cruz was flowing, man. He was, yes, yes. he was winning the fight. And then just that one time. And then he wasn't. Hey, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, my God. You're like, what the hell happened? So, yeah, I, I Tank Davis. I, I mean, the more I watch him, the more I like him. The more I, wa- I love watching him mature, right? He's going into a, you know, he's not the people think he's that thug. He's going into a calm young man, mm-hmm. and he's going into being a respectable person. And that could be hard from where he's coming from. A lot of people don't know that. When you look at a person's background to evolve Good into point. something different where you are deemed respectable by the masses, it's hard, man, when you're out there and you you banging and you, you're doing all this stuff, you live a certain kind of life. It's very difficult to transform sometimes. Well, I was thinking about something when he was saying all that, John. I want you to think of this. This, this is something that I want to see if we, we're on the same wavelength here. People come and go. Boxers come and go. Their, their titles come and go. Our respect or our love for them come and go. Who's out there that's still active, I guess is the best way of putting it, that we've kind of went, oh, we forgot about that guy. We forgot about that guy. There, I, there are a couple of them that, that come to mind, but I want to see if we're all thinking the same way. So guys that are either title holders or former title holders or whatever, that we suddenly have just all these things we're talking about, we're not talking about them anymore. Think of a couple of guys that we just went, oh, yeah, we forgot that guy. Like we were talking about, um, uh, uh, see, I forgot already. Um, yeah. Josh Warrington a few a year ago, like, Oh yeah, we forgot about that guy. Who's out there now that we just went, they're still there, they're just not there. Well, that's the thing, you know, when you when you with boxing, you have you're there and you're not there. Warrington is a is a great example. Kid Galahad, who was the champion who got knocked out, was there. He was the guy, blah, blah, blah. Now where is he? Right. Same weight, same weight division, you know. Uh, um, even even um Tiafimo, we don't hear a lot about him other than he's got no money and, and he bet on uh, he bet on Romero to be to be yeah he did and he dropped a hundred thousand because he took the odds on Romero. Yikes! <laughs> when I saw that, I went out. Oh, so you don't do that. Yeah. I don't. That is not smart. But it it, it happens, you know. I'm I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, off the top of my head, who else? Uh, well, before that, I was making all kinds of snide remarks about Triple G before he fought. Where was he? He was gone. Was he, right, yeah. You know, so, uh, uh, and, and then we had the same thing with Deontay for a while. Now Deontay's talking about coming back. So that if he wants to, that's fine. Uh, so the, it happens and you wonder, is it them that stops or is it their promoters? Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, Jose Ramirez who fought, uh, Josh Taylor, and, and mm-hmm. if he had got knocked down, he might have won. Where, where'd he go? Right. You know, I, I read that Connor Connor Ben said, come to England and fight, and he said, no. Yeah, you know, I'm that. not a journeyman. I'm not coming to England to fight you. I mean, I'm, you're just because you're young. I'm not going to risk, right? So, yeah, it, it's, as as it's out of sight, out of mind. That's basically what happens, and 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 there's a number of guys. Frank, that's a very good question. There's, I'm sure there's more. I'm I'm trying to go through we, we with with uh, Leo Santa Cruz. We hadn't seen him for a while. Then he right. came back and fought. And he went, oh, and he went. We went. Yeah, he reminded He's us. Still there, that. yeah, right there. And of course, Lomachenko's in Ukraine, and he might never make it back. Yeah, I mean, not that he's going to die or anything, but he's he's getting old, you know, and he might lose whatever he had or that edge that he had when he comes back. Y- Usyk is doing it, but that's not until August, I don't believe. But Lomachenko is not saying a word about boxing. Right. Nobody's saying Thanks for a good word reason. About yeah. So yeah. what's he going to be when he returns? Who knows how long this war is going to go? Yeah. And well, it seems like he's, he's committed, right? Yeah. He's committed. So there's, I'm sure there's uh, Gary Russell Jr. is another one who disappeared for a going, long yeah. time. Yeah. And he lost. I mean, right. why That's is That's my he, point. Right. Right. Why isn't he demanding a rematch with, with this guy? Cause he could beat this guy. I know he could beat him. Why is he just going back where he gets quiet? So, I don't know. It's, I think it's just an example of how different people are. You know, I, I, I never got the impression that just my opinion, Gary, that Gary was all that ambitious. 
you know, he was fine with doing what he was doing. He didn't have to be the number one guy. He was okay with it. And he loses, he breaks his hand. If that isn't motivation, his dad dies. If that isn't motivation to get in there, whoop that guy, nothing is. And he, and, and he's healing. Sure. Word, yeah. What's he doing? So, I yeah. mean, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's men, it's people. Uh, people are all different. Well, it's, it's Charles is prone to save styles, make fights. Styles also make who you are and what you want to do. So, Charles, is there somebody out there you're thinking, why haven't we heard from him? Or maybe we've heard from him if we ignored him. Well, I'm going to go with my man. You know, I'm waiting on him, Luis Ortiz. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, waiting on him, right, yeah. Right. You know, I'm, well, I've been waiting. Now, they still, they're going to wait till he gets 69. So, they, they might, <laughs> you know, they, we know the fight we want to see. He wants to, you know, he wants to fight some folks. But, you know, they just kind of put him out there. Maybe he'll get really old this time. He we can't come back. And then we do get it, bring him back. He'll be 70. Uh, but um, the other person is um, one of John's favorite people, and it's not really his fault. It is what it is, is Demetrius Andre. Uh, yeah, so, right. yeah. Right. So that being said, like we said, how long he's had that title, um, you know, like I said, uh, um, I think he should come on and go and get that fight with Benavidez. I think it's time. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, I, if that was me, I'd be calling Benavidez. I'd be like, look, okay. I know, you know, you look at it might be the, the weight might be a little something or whatever, but I'm 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 looking around and I'm saying, well, I can't get to this fight. Charlo's not gonna fight me. I know I can't get to fight with Canelo just treating me like I was a stepchild. I'm looking at Benavidez. Benavidez came in, he handled his business, and, and I'm saying, yeah, I want that fight. Because if he gets into the ring Benavidez and he can beat Benavidez, then it's like Another one. Let's right. Here I am. Another notch. Right. Yeah. Here I am. Let's go. So I think if that was me, and I, I, I feel that I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at and my stature and what I can do. I'm stepping into the ring. I'm calling out Benavidez because that's going to give him a lot of love and it removes an element. Uh, it removes one person out of the slot that other people might be thinking about. So now it's like, okay, I beat Benavidez, Charlo. What's going on? And that's a fight you could hold any place because we don't even know where Andre is right now. And you could you could make it, yeah, you <laughs> could make it work. So I think that would be pretty good. And again, there are a lot of those fights I think we can say, let's just get it going. Because you know, okay, here's here's my thing. Here's my my little soapbox thing is that we have guys that we want to see fight, that we assume <clears throat> they want to fight, yet we haven't put together again, Charles Farmer Productions here. Let's get this thing going. But how do we, I mean, what has to happen when you have a, my, I was thinking Gary Russell Jr. myself. It's like, is he still active? I mean, now that he lost, okay. Does that mean that he just, we don't have to worry about him anymore. When he was winning and he was the champ, he was undefeated. Well, what's he doing next? Well, maybe we don't have to worry about what he does now. Maybe he's go, Thanks, Gary. Do you want to come back or not? Who cares? You know, not not undefeated, but you know what I mean. Right. So, what what do we do with some of these guys that we're like again? Leo Santa Cruz is another one. Is he still there? Is he still viable? Uh, Mikey or Danny Garcia? Where, where are these guys doing? Danny's fighting. Still, you saw Danny's that. Fight? Danny's right, fight. right. Yeah, it's but like, oh they, wow, what do you know? Yeah. Are are they viable entities in what they're doing or or not? But I like Keith Thurman. You know. Or, or Sean Porter, we, we keep talking about those guys. We haven't talked about them lately, but as if they are still part of the mix, but there are certain guys we go, oh, yeah, that guy's got a belt we haven't seen fight. Oh, that oh Joe Smith Jr.'s fighting this next weekend. We kind of forgot about him. Whoops, what happened there? Not really? <laughs> yeah, well, but okay, but, you know, and some of these heavyweights, because we're so caught up on the Fury, Wilder, Joshua, blah, 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 they're like three or four heavyweights that we used to talk about quite a bit that we don't even mention anymore. And Charles brought up one of Mortiz. You know, there are uh, guys who went, oh, yeah, they're still there. So to me, it's let's get these guys going and see what's happening. So, John, it looks like you have something you want to, to add to that. Oh, I, I, I was just thinking about Ortiz. I, I, he didn't look all that good in his last fight. So that yeah. might get him more, more people want to fight it because a lot of people don't want to fight it, as we know. That might help like, no. <laughs> or, or he just really has finally, you know, he's what, uh, 70 years old, right? So yeah. he's finally showing it. 
So it finally had happened to him. It happened to Hopkins. It's finally happened to Ortiz. His legs aren't right. And that's usually what yeah. happens. With fighters right. are legs. And I hope that's not true because he's a class act too. But I still, you know, even with that, what would you call that? I would call that a subpar performance against Charles Mark because I think Ortiz yeah. beat him all day. And he got knocked down a few times. And he, then he just hit him. And Martin was like, Oh, I think I'm on another planet. Remember that yeah. was one of those stunners, right? Showing that Ooh. he's obviously, yeah, he obviously can always he's always going to be able to punch, and he's that he's got that Cuban style, and he's he's crafty, Ding. crafty. So I hope that didn't mean that he's done, but I, I just I don't know. It was when I was watching, I was going, oh man, you know, he got brutally knocked out by uh, Wilder twice. And yeah. that, that's going to – that well, not brutally, but he got knocked out. That's going to catch up with you. That's going to catch up with you no matter how good you are. And, and seriously, nobody knows how old he is. We say 70. He's probably could be – it's like Archie 50, Moore. Yeah. yeah, he could be 50. 48, you yeah. know, 49 now. He says he's 42. He's been 42 for five years. So, you know, some <laughs> of – the math is off here somewhere. But, yeah, I, I but I still want to see him fight, of course, but I don't want to see him lose because I, right. I, I like the right. guy and I, I – but no, again, last point, and I said it already. I said it again, I don't see anybody challenging him. Remember, he told Dilly and White, I say it all the time. I'm there. I'll come down Ling London and fight you. And Dilly and White went, what? What was that? Bad connection. Bad connection. Bad connection. Yeah. Yeah. No. What? <laughs> Can't hear anything. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously in in his peer group, very respected. Okay. So we're let's look let's look archival here. Let's look at. Charles, the guy no one wanted to fight. And I'm sure there's 3,000 of them, but just think off the top of your head, who was the guy that no one wanted? These went, I don't want that smoke. Just, it could be any way class, any era, but who was the guy you went, man, I, no, I, I got somebody else I could fight instead of that guy. Uh, and his prime, uh, George Foreman, clearly. Oh, well, okay, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, George Foreman. I mean, you know what Ali did, but prior to that, I mean, I mean, we saw what happened with Fraser. Nobody wanted George Foreman. True, Nobody. True, true, true. So yeah, George Foreman off the top of my head. Okay. John. Well, for a number of years it was Triple G. None of, I mean, they complained that his resume was kind of iffy, and it's true, but Sergio Martinez and the heavyweights, they want anything to do with him. You know, when he was ripping and knocking everybody out, they were avoiding him like the plague and, and obviously not anymore. But and then Canelo waited a couple of more years until he saw some signs and then he fought him. But for a while, the, the big guys really, uh, really didn't want. There were a couple others there that they they avoided him. The only guy who stepped up and said, look, you move up. I'll fight you. was that guy from Oakland that I seem to I'm forgetting his name right now. He was the guy who said, OK, you move up eight pounds. We're on Triple G and take that challenge so yeah but okay. he was considered he was he was dominating there for a number of years and people were to a degree avoiding him i'm gonna go a weird way here livingston ross i bramble i don't remember anyone wanting to get in the ring with that guy of course i don't even want knowing that they didn't want to get out of the ring with him just one of those guys who went this guy's nuts i don't know that anyone was lined up to fight him I don't know why that name just popped Edwin in my head. Edwin Rosario knocked him out. Oh, yeah. Like I'm not saying rounds. that when, yeah. when someone got in the ring with me, they didn't take care of business. But there was a stretch of time there where that was the guy that seemed like everyone was like, no, nah, this guy's crazy. I don't want to have anything to do with him. All right. Anybody else, Charles, that you can think of, you went, yeah, this guy is is, is just too dangerous to, to mess with. Uh, For a while, uh, Thomas Hearns. Yeah. There's another yeah. good one, yeah. You know, be before the Sugar Ray Leonard fight, that's you know, true. A lot, That's lot true. of people they didn't, you know, you know, with that whole Pepino Quavis thing, and you know, whatever. Right. Nobody, I mean, he he looked just so dangerous. So yeah, Thomas Hearns for for a while. Well, he was dangerous. I mean, that's just a that's a, an oddly put together person to be to to be fighting at one forty seven to be six two and still be able to do what he did and box and oh yeah, that that was dangerous, John. Well, it was always iffy with heavyweights because they knew they had to survive if he hit you with Ernie Shavers yeah. for a while because of that power that he had. I mean, they weren't exactly shaking in their boots, but they knew, just ask Larry Holmes, they knew they didn't want to get hit with that right hand. Ask Muhammad Ali if, if he was still around getting hit. I mean, he was hitting a number of right hands. He wasn't perfect at all. If you could take it, 
you could stop him. I mean, he knocked out Jimmy Ellis when he was pretty much done. Jerry Corey took care of him, but we know how good Jerry Corey was. But there, there was a number of people I remember that were, and, and even a little bit of Ron Lyle back in the 70s. There were other, True. they were a little concerned because of his record. You know, they thought he was, something was going on there with him. And they, that's not true at all. Ron was great. But uh, they, it seems like if you're that way, you get, for a while, you have this rep. Uh, and then people are like, well, you know, I, I don't really. So the, the, the bigger question is, who is it now that right, right this moment Okay. Who is the guy now that people are are are, are hesitant? And I, I I think we we mentioned him already. I don't leave it at that. We already mentioned him. <laughs> Who did we mention? I was I don't pay attention to the show. We I mentioned talk. him now. I might be building him up a little bit too much, but uh, uh, we said that the the older guys don't want to fight him, and I don't blame him. And it's Boots. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't yeah. want to because they see how good he is. They don't want to risk it. And the younger guys are like, I don't want to fight that guy. He's he's another guy that just gets better, it seems like, every time. So he's I think he's being avoided to a certain degree. I mean, they, they said they wanted to get him another fight. They can't get him another fight. Can't schedule right. him another fight right now. Well, so they're, he's they're, just kind of waiting. He's in limbo. He's in limbo, yeah. Well, there are guys that are scary because you don't know what they're going to do to you. And this is that's the foreman thing. Well, I just don't know if that's a safe thing to get in the ring with that guy or Sonny Liston or Mike well, okay, Tyson. Yeah, that's true yes, for a I, while. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, I think if it hadn't been for Cassius Clay, we'd still be afraid of Sonny Liston. I, I don't know if there's a better way of putting that. Um, and, you know, and, and Mike Tyson, I think if it hadn't been for Robin Gibbons, we'd still be afraid of Mike Tyson. <laughs> but the idea being, you know, this guy's going to walk through you and doesn't care that you're there. So why get in the ring with him? Now, there are a lot of guys that got in the ring with him. So, you know, the Jesse Ferguson's of the world's like, well, I, I'll take the fight. Sure. Quick, tell and, us. Yeah. And 30 seconds later, you're going, whoops, this was a bad idea. You know, and how many Mike Tyson fights didn't you see because you didn't get there in time to, to turn on the TV at the right spot? But, you know, OK, so we're looking at Boots Ennis. That's that's a good one. Uh, Charles, who else right now do you think they're just not getting fights because there's no, as we talked about a few weeks ago, there's no point in fighting that guy. That's a lot of people. I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say this. And, and some people to run in their mouth saying whatever, but I don't believe it. I mean, he, I, I don't think they really want to fight Tank Davis right now. I really don't. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, you, you couple guys got in there winning. He handled, you know, or, you know, uh, dealing with Raleigh or whatever. But I mean, the the guys that we really want him to fight, we do those special fights. They're talking, but they don't. Nobody's running up to the to the to the concession stand to go. I'm signing up. Yeah, yeah. Because Tank Davis is evolving and he's getting better, and people know it's so scary. Yeah. It sounds it sounds good. You know, Oscar throwing some stuff around, talking some stuff, but. Until we start to see some serious negotiations, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll see a lot of people. The top guys not calling, they, they not, not running to negotiate to see Tank Davis. Yeah, that's a good point because, yeah, I, I don't know why you would. I mean, now he can beat you in more than one way. You know, maybe he could all along, but now he can beat you. He can beat you and he can still win the fight. Yeah, that's kind of a, that's a no, no win situation. So. Yeah, that'd be kind of tough. All right, John, you said we should be talking about the guys. Now, who else besides Boots? Well, sometimes it's just the guys you don't know that are scary. The guy you mentioned, Warrington, and, and the guy, Lara, that, that knocked him out. He hasn't been able to get any really get any fights right. himself right. because of his power. He's got other guys at that, at that weight kind of scared. Not scared is the wrong word. Uh, concerned. Yeah. I'll just say concerned. I, you know, I don't know uh, exactly how I feel about Connor Ben. You know, he knocked out my paisan, Chris Algieri, brutally. I mean, Chris went down on his face. Uh, I think he's getting better and better. There are still flaws, but I think he's getting to the point where people are, are hesitating fighting him because, you know, uh, um, uh, dang it, uh, the guy beat Amir Khan recently, uh, uh, just recently. He, he lost to Errol Spence and retired. 
uh, uh, after he beat Amir know, Khan. You know what I'm I talking know about. Yeah. You're talking about, yeah. Um, he had a big offer on the table to fight Conor Ben. Gosh dang it. And and he retired. So, and it's good that he retired because he retired with a victory. He didn't have to fight Conor Ben. But if he wanted that money, Frank's looking it up. Good. I'm, I'm drawing Kel, a blank Kel, here. Kel, Kel Brook. Kel Brook. Yeah. Kel Brook, he had that money. He, he I think, reportedly, it was like uh, uh, in the excess of like twelve million dollars or something like that, plus a percentage of the box office. So he would have made twenty million. Uh, he made a lot against Amir Khan, so it's not like he didn't. He made like right. ten or something, so it's good. But going out on a victory uh, was 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 really important. But so Connor, I mean, going through the divisions. Uh, 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 Berlanga is fighting soon and he looked like the guy that was scaring everybody because he had like 16 knockouts in a row and then his last two fights no uh, he's, he's, he's he hasn't looked all that good so they, these guys can look like ooh they're scary and then suddenly something will happen you talk about Sonny Liston you gotta talk about him you know because real quick because yeah you're right Charles and Frank uh, nobody thought that anybody would ever beat him he would be the heavyweight champion for years and I still marvel at how the guy behind me, a young, young Muhammad Ali, 22 years old, beat him. I, it's just, how did he beat that big, ugly bear? Like he said, I mean, it's, it's the audacity of the imagination. Oh, my God. To say, I know and you don't know, and no one else has a clue that this could happen. And I think it could happen. Like, there's no freaking way. Yeah, I mean, and think about it real fast. We've already mentioned two guys that were so scary, and he beat both of them. Yeah, he true, beat Sonny true. Liston, the big ugly bear, and then he beats the mummy, you know, and the mummy, nobody wanted to fight him. I mean, right. he's knocking everybody, he's clubbing everybody to death with a ball. I mean, and yeah, we make fun of it, but God, George was so strong. Those arms were as big as people's legs, you know, and 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 and, and I remember Howard Cosell, you know, it's going to be the end of mom at that yeah. day. You know, and, and I remember thinking he's right. I was scared, even though I bet money on not like Tia Fimbo, 100,000, but I bet <laughs> money with a friend of me on the basketball team that Muhammad would win. And my heart might have been where where yeah. my head should have been. But yeah, where your wallet was uh, right. right. But that just tells you you're right, Frank. You nailed it with the audacity. He was that way. But and then he repeats the history 10 years later. And he that's just how special he was. But those kind of bruisers like Tyson too, for a while, they're, they're just so damn scary. I don't think there's anybody in that class right now when you just go, oh, he's scaring everybody before. Tyson used to scare people before they even got in the ring with him, remember? Because then he'd be staring at him, rocking or whatever, and they're like, holy moly. Getting a ring with him and for a while took a massive you-know-what. For It was well, like, oh, gosh. You, you mentioned the monster walking in the ring. Yeah, Tyson's yeah. ring walk might have been the scariest thing I've ever seen. Like Jack because Dempsey. It was, like Jack Dempsey it was just, I don't, I have no feelings about this whatsoever, other than I'm going to throw every punch as hard as I can. And if you're in the way of it, I'm sorry about that. Actually, I'm not sorry about that. If it happens, it happens, you know. And some of those fights were just, oh my goodness. And like you said, how, how do you, again, Buster Douglas? I'm just going to say, you got to get Buster Douglas. <laughs> how do you have the audacity to think, I can do this when it was apparent no one else was going to come even close at that particular point in time? How Major do you credit. walk in and go, I think I can take it? Believe. I don't know why, I don't know why you think you can because no one else, is, and especially when you look at Buster's track record up until that point. Yeah. You know, at least Ali, Cassius Clay, undefeated, had been successful doing what he was doing in his style of doing it. Buster hadn't been that successful. I mean, he'd been successful, but not to that point to say, this is the night. Of course, everyone has a night. Okay. Now, Charles, I'm going to throw one at you. I don't know if they're afraid of him. And this is, this is my old Paul Williams thing coming back. So you're going to have to forgive me for that. <laughs> Could Fundora be that kind of person where people go, you know, I don't see any point in fighting him at this weight class. We move up another couple of classes, I'll take him, but I'm not fighting him at this weight class when he's six six or whatever, and there's no point in that. No. Nah. Is he that scary? Nah, nah. Because he okay. has too many flaws. I mean, you saw the That's fight true. against Lubin where he got rocked and Lubin was giving him the business. Sure. And against a little bit more bigger, 
and more skilled. I mean, I like Lubin, but Lubin didn't pay attention to the last instructions that he had in this fight. Good, he went off right. script. He right. went off script. But somebody with more skills, a, a decent skill set or a good skill set and a solid plan, nah, he'll be right for the picking, which is why he definitely does not want to see Charlo. He did. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh Charlo's like, God. okay. Yeah. Bring it yeah. on, bring yeah. it on. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I, I mean, that's great. Now, he has the size to make you go, oh, I'm look. But yeah, he would have to refine his skill set because he takes too many chances, unfortunately, to be yeah. skilled right. at this point. Yeah. yeah. Well, and but isn't that the fun of this? Isn't that the fun of looking at things and going, okay, I see, this is the thing where we need a time machine. And I know we've seen the whole, you know, the, the, the Miami, you know, the, the, all the press and all that with, with uh, Cassius Clay leading up to the Liston fight, but to actually be in there and, and in that mindset go, who is this guy and why does he think he's got a chance? There's no freaking way. How does he think he's got a shot? You know, mm-hmm. and, and Charles, I don't know where you were. I mean, we were probably still in the city, but I don't know where you were when uh, the lead up to Buster Douglas against Mike Tyson. John, what were you, you know, I, I didn't even know the fight. I mean, I knew the fight was on, but I wasn't paying attention to it. There was there was no thought of, well, even though he was from Columbus, like, no, this is this is just another day at the office. I was I was living in uh, Salida and I was watching it with my son, and he loved Mike Tyson. And and no, I didn't think Douglas was going to win. Uh, it was on HBO, and and by the third or fourth round, my son, who was only uh, uh, I don't know, about eight years old and looked over at me and I went, I don't know, Nick, you know, it's, I, I don't know. It, this guy, Douglas, is really fighting a good fight. And, 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 and we watched it all the way to the end. And, you know, so it was just, yeah. And again, that's why sports is so great because you, you, you're never, no one's invincible. And some things like this do happen. And they, when they do, it's just amazing. Well, oh, okay. Well, we've got a almost a minute here. Let's just throw that out there. The 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 time where you went, this is different than what I thought it was going to be, or this was a, a, a an event to have seen. Um, I go to the Nomas Roberto Duran. I never would have thought I would have seen that. That that just would have never happened. And I know there are reasons behind it. But you went, that I didn't expect. Buster Douglas, another one. Um, Charles, anything you went? That was just a big moment that I didn't expect to have happen. Yeah, I'll be mean, honest. I mean, you probably going to say there's no way I'll say this with what I'm going to say. Uh, Shook Ray Leonard beating Hackler the way he did. I, I was like, I thought Hackler would just try to Walk beat the hell out of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, my God. I said, are you de- – I said, you you define death again? Did you did you get enough with the, when they detached your retina? He was like, dude, I don't give a damn. Yeah. I don't care what you're saying. Here I am. And and one thing about him, when he was right, <laughs> he was he feared no man. So, yeah, that Sugar Ray Leonard, the uh, Marvin Hackler fight. Okay, John. Well, I'll just piggyback off, uh, off that when Sugar Ray Leonard got beat up and knocked down by Terry Norris. That was a I, I didn't see the, I didn't see that coming. Nothing no, against not Terry. Yeah, yeah. And and Sugar was like a miracle man. He come back after, and you're like, okay, he's gonna do it again. And he did. He got whooped. I mean, he it wasn't yeah. even close. Nobody saw that. And 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 I mean, that's 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 what happens. The, uh, even George Foreman, when he fought Jerry Cooney, even though Jerry Cooney had been gone for a while, nobody thought George Foreman was going to knock Jerry Cooney out like he did. Nobody thought Michael Spinks was going to knock out Jerry Cooney. Like, that was even right. huger. You thought Jerry Cooney so much bigger. Is that a word, yeah. huger? Bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. And 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 he did it. And the, the Spinks jinx, you know, and, and that, that one was a, a – a, my, a, a minor, sh- no, not really not minor. It was a major shocker back yeah, then. Yeah. Uh, but, and we've had some upsets uh, uh, recently, you know, with, like we said, to you, FEMA losing, Lomachenko losing. You just, right. you don't this see those. Yeah, right. yeah and, and, you know, I always like to say, oh, well, I already wrote out the wrote first paragraph written here of the fight. And, and you know, I'm right sometimes, but then again, I'll, be, I'll, I'll have the first paragraph and I'll look at it and go, well, eh, it's too bad. Oh, it away. really yep. reads really nice and I'm going to have to delete it. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's been, there's been quite a few, even, even Deontay, you know, back to him real quick, who was saying before he fought Fury that he was going to, he would end up knocking him down twice. 
right. and get within seconds and maybe one more punch of knocking him out. Nobody was saying that. You're truly included. It was Fury all the way. He's going to blow him out. Well, we didn't say that, but we were saying actually Wilder had more of a chance, but he, we didn't think he was going to win. Wilder is the one that shocked us in the sense that he gave Fury hell that night. That might have well, made Fury get used to want to retire sooner, too, after that brawl with uh, Wilder. So, see, you well, don't know. You don't know. You don't know as much as you think. I'll take us out on a, on a note that's not even a, it's a, it's a side note. It's not even a, a high note. There were a lot of people in the casino, in the sports book, that were shocked that McGregor didn't beat Mayweather. Anyway, on that note, we are going to say bye-bye. Yeah. Look, I know I was there, but I how saw him that, doing it. Yeah. How could that know. be? I don't they know. must not have known. Saw- like Roger Mayweather said, you don't know nothing about boxing. <laughs> that must have been, right? That must have been it. How could you even they, they consider were running, that? They were running to the ticket window, and each time the odds changed, they would literally crawl on top of each other to bet more money. And Honor I talked McGregor. To, and I spoke to the, the head of the sports book like three weeks later, and he said it was like Christmas in July. It was crazy. He said, we were just raking in money, and people were just betting, and we're like, we're laughing as they're taking their money. Like, you want to bet on McGregor? Really? Okay. You know, PT, it's like, PT, PT Barnum, Frank. Yep, Charles. that's it. Hey, I just got one that's last it. thing to say about that. Okay. Rest in peace, Uncle Roger. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And he was all right, right on. We, <laughs> yeah, all right, I know we have other places to go, things to do, so thank you, gentlemen. Enjoy yourselves, and we will talk to you soon. You bet. All right.